All right. Good morning, everybody. So my name is Martin de Vries. I'm the CTO at Bright Computing. And I'm going to be talking to you today about provisioning and managing a compute for the intelligent edge. So first of all, if you're not familiar with uh, Bright Computing, you're probably also not familiar with our products, which is uh, called Bright Cluster Manager. So Bright Cluster Manager is a product for system administrators to turn a pile of hardware into a fully functional cluster. So we streamline cluster deployments and we manage and health check those clusters after they've been deployed. Uh, so we not only can do HPC clusters, but we can also um, integrate with technologies like OpenStack and Kubernetes and Ceph and several HPC workload management systems. Um, so the way our software works is we have a cluster management daemon running on all of the nodes inside of the cluster and these daemons are communicating with each other in order to make the cluster manageable. To the outside world we expose a management API uh, which is consumed by applications like Brightview, by Cluster Management Shell and which you can also call natively uh, as a JSON uh, remote procedure call API. And we also provide uh, Python bindings for that uh, as well as C++ bindings. So there are several ways in which you can manage your cluster. Um, so some of use, some users prefer the graphical user interface called Brightview, and some people are more command line people, so they uh, they use Siemens in order to manage their cluster. So you can run uh, on-premise Bright clusters, uh, clusters in the cloud, or hybrid uh, uh, clusters, which are partially on-premise as well as in the cloud. And the nice thing that we do there is we um, provision those cloud nodes exactly in the same way as we provision the local nodes. So they use the same software image. So it's super easy to uh, repurpose nodes. So a node that's running HPC workload management system right now could be running a Kubernetes uh, a minute later, or maybe even 30 seconds later. And uh, we also provide a rich collection of HPC and deep learning uh, tools and libraries to make it very easy to get uh, workload up and running on your Bright cluster. So how about Bright and SUSE? So we've been working together for a long time. So the first, uh, so initially we started supporting uh, SUSE Linux in uh, uh, 2009. Um, so right now, in fact, we have supported various versions of SUSE Linux right now. The latest version of Bright is 8.1. 8.2 is going to be released at the end of the month. Um, and right now we support slash 12, SP2, and SP3. So SP4 support we're expecting uh, in February 2019. So I believe that SP4 is actually, it's actually not released yet. I think it's coming in December. Slash 15 has already been released, but we have not added the support for it yet because there have been uh, some major changes that we need to um, adopt to. Uh, so that's coming in January of 2019. Um, and the nice thing is that SLES is actually bundled on the Bright ISO, so uh, you literally get a single DVD when you're trying to deploy your cluster that already has uh, SLES included on it, so you just boot from that DVD on your head node, install your head node, and after that you can uh, start booting your compute nodes. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, pretty large uh, shared customers with SUSE, uh, running um, a lot of large clusters, so that, that's pretty exciting. Uh, so let's talk about Bright Edge. So Bright Edge is a new feature that we're introducing in Bright 8.2, and uh, it allows you to um, uh, have uh, distributed clusters. So you can have uh, a central uh, cluster running a couple of nodes, so it consists of a head node and a couple of compute nodes, and then you can have several edge locations um, for doing remote compute. So there are several reasons why that, uh, why that is a good idea. Uh, or first of all, it, it actually provides a simplified uh, way of deploying and managing uh, the, the, location, the edge locations. And it also reduces the administration time for those distributed clusters because you just have a single cluster that you are managing as opposed to having uh, several different clusters that you need to manage. And it also promotes standardization so because all of those edge locations are, uh, they look and feel exactly the same way. So there's two use cases why you may want to have uh, Edge. So first of all, you may have uh, uh, compute resources located in different parts of the world, um, different geographical locations. So that's, that's one reason why uh, Bright Edge is, uh, is interesting. The other one is uh, IoT, when you may have uh, sensors sitting in your, in your store or in your factory that you need to be able to act on very quickly. So very often latency is an issue. Um, so if a sensor detects that uh, some threshold is being exceeded, you may need to take action right now. You don't have time to upload that data into the cloud or to a central location. You really need to have your compute where, uh, where your sensors are. So especially if you have a lot of those locations, then it really, you can really benefit from having um, 
bright edge because you can manage all of those edge locations from a single interface as if it is a single large cluster. So you have uh, lower management costs since you just um, have a single cluster that needs to be managed. You have higher productivity because you're standardizing uh, the way these edge locations look. So you don't have edge locations that work completely differently from other edge locations. You have a simple deployment procedure. So that means that you do not need uh, trained IT staff in every single location where you have a compute going on. Uh, it's as simple as uh, connecting a couple of cables, loading a DVD, and that's it. The whole procedure, um, the whole procedure is, is automated from there on. And you don't need necessarily a high bandwidth uh, kind of conne uh, connection to your core cluster, because I believe that we just um, need about 50 bytes per second of bandwidth per node, so that is uh, very modest. So the way we um, we, we came about this is we, uh, we, we've had cluster extension functionality for quite a few years already. So that is um, a head node which you are extending into the cloud, AWS or Azure, for example. And uh, the nice thing is that those remote nodes, they look and feel and behave exactly the same way as your local nodes do. So they're provisioned with exactly the same software image, etc. cetera. So, um, what, what that provides is uniformity because those, uh, those cloud nodes look and feel exactly the same way as your on-premise nodes do and therefore your workload can also be very easily migrated into the cloud. Uh, and in the cloud we actually have a, a cloud director which is not actually displayed over here which takes over some uh, functionality for, that normally the head node would provide on a local cluster. Uh, so Edge is, can be considered as a special case for uh, cloud computing or actually the other way around. Um, uh, cloud computing is, uh, is a special case of edge computing where each edge location happens to be a cloud region. So, for example, the US West 1 the facility in AWS, for example. However, there's uh, two differences. So the public cloud provides uh, VPCs and those um, that the edge, uh, and, and, uh, or VNets in the case of Azure, uh, and edge locations don't necessarily have that. And also the way uh, public cloud nodes boot is different than, uh, than Edge because those public cloud nodes, they boot off of an AMI or, uh, or a disk image of some sort, whereas your Edge nodes actually don't have that, so they need to pixie boot. So um, this is what an, what an Edge setup looks like. So you have a central cluster here, a core cluster, uh, consisting of a head node and a couple of compute nodes, and then you have uh, Edge locations X, Y, and Z, where each edge location has an edge director and it has a couple of edge nodes and a private network that these edge nodes are uh, are using for booting purposes. And then the only thing that we need over here is, in terms of connectivity is we need, IP, we need IP level connectivity between the core cluster and between each of these edge locations. So um, let's talk about these edge directors. So first of all, an edge, let's, let's define some things. An edge node is a node that uh, is at an edge location, so it's geographically separated from the core cluster. And an edge director is an edge node that acts as a head node in an edge location. So it serves, uh, serves a couple of services that a head node would serve on an on-premise cluster, in, um, in your central cluster. So it's very similar to the, the cloud director that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so it takes care of um, so the edge director itself is provisioned by uh, booting it from the BMC virtual media or by local media. So it could be a USB stick or it could be uh, a DVD, for example. Um, and it authenticates to the head nodes using a shared secret. Uh, and at that point, we, we know that it is a, a node that we trust. And all, all communication uh, thereafter is encrypted using SSL connections. So what it does is it runs a Pixie server to facilitate uh, the booting process for, um, for edge nodes. Uh, so what those edge nodes are doing is they, they pixie boot over a private network, uh, get, uh, get provisions by that uh, edge director, and afterwards they join uh, the, the global cluster, basically. So security is, uh, is important in these, type, in these type of situations. So um, what we're, as I mentioned already, we use a shared secret to make sure that we're really talking to the, uh, to the, to the core cluster. Um, to make sure that the uh, the edge director that we know from the core cluster that we're talking to an edge uh, director that we trust, um, and after that we use SSL connections for all the uh, management traffic between the edge and between uh, the core cluster. So the provisioning traffic is also encrypted. So we use SSH um, rsync transport method, uh, unless a customer is using a VPN, which uh, which already encrypts the traffic. Then you can switch off the, that transport mechanism. You can just use uh, straight arcing. 
Um, so some recommendations in terms of security. So we recommend that you make sure that your physical nodes are secure because uh, if, if an intruder manages to get physical access to your edge nodes, then there's very, very little that you can do to, uh, to keep the situation secure. So it is important that you uh, make sure that the physical access is, uh, is restricted. Uh, and ideally, you also connect your, uh, your core cluster to your edge nodes um, using a secure connection. So we leave that up to the uh, to the organization that is deploying this. But ideally, you're using some sort of VPN uh, between your edge locations and between your uh, edge lo uh, between this core cluster and the edge locations. So the deployment procedure for an edge location is very simple. The only thing you have to do is establish IP level connectivity from your edge location to the core cluster, and then you, uh, you connect your edge director to the public network. You connect your uh, edge director and your edge nodes to the private edge network that you have at each edge location. Um, then you boot your edge director into the bright node installer from an ISO or from a virtual media from, through the BMC, for example. And what the node installer will then do is it will identify itself to the head node and then it will take care of uh, configuring the BMC. If that, that will only work, of course, if you're not using BMC virtual media. Um, Creates the file systems, it provisions the edge director, um, OS software image from the core cluster. Uh, it takes care of transferring all of the software images that you're going to be using for provisioning your edge nodes uh, to the edge director. And it will also transfer uh, some, some file systems that uh, are typically shared between the nodes on the slash cm shared uh, mount point. So that uh, all of your edge locations have an up-to-date copy of that uh, tree as well. And then you can start pixie booting your edge nodes from the edge director over the private edge network, and they will be um, they will be added to the cluster basically. So we've been talking to some customers about this, and uh, I just want to share two objections that we uh, that we've seen. So what happens if the network link between the edge location and the core cluster goes down? So oh, good news. So we thought about that. Um, I'm not going to go over all those details, but you can you can read it over here. So we can buffer a lot of the monitoring information that those edge nodes have been collecting, and essentially we can be uh, we can be down for 8,000 minutes by default without um, having any gaps in, the, in your monitoring data. So as soon as you as long as you connect it back uh, within 8,000 minutes, you're not going to lose any monitoring data. And if that's not good enough, then you can always increase the number of monitoring points that we're catching. <coughs> Another uh, objection that we've heard is, what if you have edge locations that have low bandwidth links to the core cluster? So um, that's also not a problem because uh, Bright is extremely efficient when it comes to bandwidth usage. So we only require about 50 bytes per second in terms of bandwidth per node uh, to the core cluster. And also this ISO that you're using to boot your edge director with is, uh, can contain everything already. So it can. By default, it, it's very lean and it doesn't contain anything and, uh, and all of the data is going to get transferred over the wire. But if you need to be very conservative in terms of bandwidth, what you can do is uh, you just put all of the software images already on this ISO. You can uh, put the entire slash CM share tree on that ISO. So um, we did take, take this into account. So in conclusion, um, you can use a single slash-based cluster uh, with, nodes from, with nodes in different geographical locations and you can uh, manage all of that as a single cluster. Uh, we provide a simple deployment method, uh, so it does not require highly skilled uh, IT staff for uh, deploying all of, those, all of those edge locations. It eliminates the need uh, to manage many, many different clusters individually or semi-individually, so uh, that, that will definitely help out with the, uh, with the administrative work. And uh, those edge nodes are largely controlled from a local edge from a local edge director. So we are all of the, the software images are stored over there. Um, we uh, we expose the slash cm shared tree to the nodes from there, um, and we leverage existing technology. So this is not something that we just came up with uh, out of the blue. This is uh, functionality that we've already developed uh, about six years ago in order to do public cloud integration. And we're using that same technology to make this also possible, which means that we, um, we can provide a much more robust uh, product today, even though it's brand new functionality. Um, and a nice thing that I actually did not mention yet, so those edge nodes can actually run different workload engines. So you can run HPC job schedulers uh, at the edge, you can run Kubernetes at the edge. It's uh, slightly off the slide here, but you can also, in the future, run OpenStack at the edge. 
Uh, so we don't support OpenStack at the edge yet, but um, we do support uh, Kubernetes and HPC workload management systems at the edge. So some future directions. Um, HA edge directors, so right now we just allow you to have a single uh, edge director at each edge location, but you may want to do high availability, so uh, we need to allow for multiple HA, multiple edge directors to be used at, at, at each edge site. Um, uploadable monitoring on edge directors, so right now the head node of the cluster is responsible for fetching uh, monitoring data off of the, the edge nodes, but it would be more efficient if we could do that uh, using the edge director, so that's something that we will likely be adding um, in the next version of Bright or the version afterwards. And that's also going to be relevant for uh, um, access scale, making Bright more scalable to uh, hundreds of thousands of nodes. And the last thing, um, edge login nodes is also something that we will likely be working on. So that may be uh, relevant in certain use cases. And uh, in other cases, it may not be relevant. But uh, we're, we're going to be working on that. So that's it. Do you have uh, any questions?